You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Do you have a friend or maybe a frenemy who is so brutally honest that they get on your last nerve? Or maybe they're so honest that that's why you're best friends. Or maybe they're a social assassin who feels like they need to point out everybody else's flaws and annoyances just so that they can share the world the ultimate truth of what's really going on in the world. Well, maybe you have some friends like that. I know I do. I have some people in my community like that. And there is a show all about it. And so, hello, friends. Hello, Systematic Geekologists. We're back again with another HBO series deep dive. And this time, uh, we're talking about Curb your enthusiasm. Yep. If you're very enthusiastic about this episode, I'm just going to tell you right now to curb it and like, <laughs> put it, like, you know, just get a hold of that right now. And, uh, when, when my co-host for today, Joshua and I were brainstorming shows for this HBO series, I threw out curb your enthusiasm because I was like, you know, you really can't think of HBO shows. I think without thinking about Larry David, and Kirby enthusiasm. It's been around for so long, like 20 some years. And uh, Josh was like, uh, should I watch this thing? I was like, hey, why not? And come to find out, he did his homework and he watched all of it. And I'm still behind. I still have some seasons <laughs> and episodes to go. So he way passed me on this one. Hey, everyone, I'm glad that you're part of our show today. Uh, you're taking time to listen to us. Uh, Joshua, how are you doing? How's your enthusiasm today? You know, I'm doing, doing pretty good. Um, I think what I'm really enthused about um, is next year when we talk about other shows, Will's going to do Newsroom with me because that was that was the deal was I was going to watch this <laughs> and he was going to watch Newsroom. But then Easter happened. Uh, so we're yeah. going to do, do it next year. Okay. And why I think it's funny is having watched this, Larry David, some of his mannerisms remind me of Will McAvoy's Mission to Civilize. Mm. So he had this okay. whole thing of like, he he would just correct people. I was like, no, we got to do that. Be like, you can't just do that to people. People, you know, criticize them. And he would quote Don Quixote and be like, I'm on a mission to civilize, which is, if you know, the moral of Don Quixote is hilarious because the entire point is Don Quixote failed over and over and over <laughs> and over. <laughs> <laughs> which is sort of what this show's about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this show um you know it, it's just it's just legendary and um I have heard so much about it and I was a big Seinfeld fan when that was coming out on you know NBC uh, Thursday night sitcom must see TV I watched I was appointment television Seinfeld and in college and in seminary and it was the talk of the week about what went on in uh, Seinfeld that week the show about nothing the show about people who find themselves in weird situations and, and a comedian trying to navigate his way with a, a little like annoyances of life and pointing it out to everyone else uh and and making comedy of it and so the the brains behind seinfeld uh put out his own show curb your enthusiasm for hbo uh and 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 that's larry david and so everybody hopped on it and then over the course of 20 years is unfolded and and now we're up to 11 uh seasons uh and they're going to supposedly do another final 12th season. And so uh, Joshua and I are here to, to talk about this quirky little uh, show. And, and if and if this show hits your funny bone, if this is your sense of humor, you love it. But if, if it annoys you, if it's something that like really great, <laughs> you're never going to like it. So yeah, I, I think you can't be like lukewarm on this show. I think you either really hate it or you really love it. And so Joshua, where were you in the show? I gave you this assignment. I, I failed in my own assignment, but I'm glad I lured you in <laughs> and tricked you. I bait and switched you for this one. What are, what are your ultimate thoughts about the show as you navigated all 11 seasons? Man, I am. Um... I couldn't just sit and watch it. Um, that I had a hard time doing because it, it's the pacing's a little slow at, at times. Mm -hmm. But I did find, man, it's great if I'm just laying down in the bed, getting ready to go to bed. So I did this like where I would go to sleep to it, and then I would just start back where the last thing I remember before I fell asleep the next night. <laughs> man, you're not going to believe it. That's exactly what I've been doing. <laughs> it's, the it's exact so nice thing. Though. It's such a good yeah. bedtime show for some reason. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep, yep. Because <laughs> it's it's like funny, but it's not so funny that it's like distracting. <laughs> so I'm like, I feel like I could have a good laugh, go to bed happy, and it's it's okay. 
Yeah, there's a, it's it's situational humor. I mean, in the vein of of Seinfeld's comedy, right? It's like, what's the deal with the peanuts you get on the airplane? You know, can't they make the bag any bigger? You know, I'm so annoyed that they have to close this curtain for those in first class. Like his bits that he does all stems from like. Uh, Larry David is almost uh, a clone, or I don't know who came first, the chicken or the egg, Seinfeld or, or Larry David, but uh, they're they're in the same vein. So this this show about his life, there's, it's not like a plot heavy um, TV show that if you miss an episode, you're going to totally be lost. There might be some characters that have some things happen to them, or or breakups uh, within marriages or relationships. You're like, hey, where did that person go? Why is this happening? But um, ultimately, each episode is about a situation that annoys Larry David, or, or he found himself <laughs> in an awkward moment, or he says something he probably shouldn't have said to somebody, or he was too bold in saying that to them when everybody else should be telling him that thing, and he gets in trouble, and he ultimately has to uh, apologize, or 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 he has to move on to to the next thing. So that's basically what each episode is about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is very episodic. Um, I thought I thought it was really funny. I, I think the reason that. Much, much to everybody. You know, this is one of those my wrong opinion things, right? I, I don't like Frasier or Seinfeld or Cheers. I didn't really like Cheers either. It's just like that era of sitcom. I don't know if it just like when I grew up was different. Like it just whatever it is, it just doesn't click with right. me. Mm-hmm. This clicked a little bit better. And I think it's because it was a little more raw, right? I think Seinfeld's really processed. Mm-hmm. This felt like this is just Larry David living his life. <laughs> this is just yeah. him. <laughs> it's an HBO show. So yeah, they drop F bombs. There's uh weird, awkward jokes. They 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 go leaning hard into like his ethnicity as a Jew and and race and racism, his awkwardness yeah. around black people and the things you say you don't say, the PC stuff, you know. Um and, and so this is a prime spot for an HBO that they can just kept go a little bit more raw. Yeah, those those must see TV sitcoms for uh NBC and other channels, um, you know, for a general audience and for families to gather mm-hmm. around. Um, this isn't uh, made for HBO, a perfect, perfect little yeah. situational comedy for HBO. Speaking of the race stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the one of the one of the more funny moments for me is there. <laughs> he starts eating at this uh, Arabic restaurant. I forget exactly what it was, but the the Hebrew community was not supposed to, to go there. Right. They were all like boycotting it. And he's like, I don't care. This is good food. <laughs> And yeah, he was seen eating there and eventually they start naming him like like the Jew for them or, you know, whatever. And he's like mm-hmm. supposed to be on their side of things. He's like, I'm really not, though. I just like this food. <laughs> yeah. And it's classic. If you look up like favorite or best episodes of Kirby Enthusiasm, this one's up there is the Palestinian chicken. And it's yeah, and it's yeah. like season eight, episode three. <laughs> and the whole thing is they, they go into like um, – you know, Hebrew and Palestinian relations, Jewish and Palestinian relations, as it was going on in Israel at the moment. And he's just kind of like, you know, he, he's Jewish, but not very religious. And so like, he was like, hey, look, uh, I, I lo- they have the best chicken. I'm going to keep going there. And at some point towards the end of this episode, you got two groups on either side of the street yelling at each other, Palestinians and the Jews on the other side, they're yelling at each other with their signs. And and Larry David is walking down the middle of the street, looking at both sides going, what do I do? It's a hard decision. My people or I really love this chicken. And so, um, you know, it's those kind of things that again, make you, it's, it's that comedy that makes you feel a little slightly uncomfortable. Uh, but yet they're, they're poking and pointing at something that's a general truth that was really going on in, in the real world, which is what, comedians comedians do so yeah that's up there as as a classic but also um you know pushing the boundaries on comedy uh but also one of, one of the best um Man. episodes that yeah. they have on on the whole series good stuff good stuff. yeah one of the things i like about this show they did start in like the early 2000s or maybe 2000 up to now that you see like the evolution of what's going on not just style and cars but also with phones like they start off with like <laughs> cell phones that are like flip phones and eventually they migrate into like blackberries and the blackberry craze and then they move into like the iphone at one point i think someone's texting on their blackberry and he's looking at it and he's like um what are you doing why are you ignoring me you're just staring down at your phone what are you doing this text thing and and she's like yeah he goes what if i just pulled out a magazine and started reading it right in front of your face when you were trying to talk to me would that be rude and and she was like yeah i guess it would be so they're like social commentating on that kind of stuff too and now we're like (laughs) yeah this emergence of emojis and like um 
LOL and smiley faces that you can text in folks. They're they're like lean into the awkwardness and weirdness of that as it goes on. So I thought that was pretty. He is the crotchety old man. Like he represents all other crotchety old men get to live through him. One hundred percent. And <laughs> and like he yeah, he he can't let things go. The whole point of this show is like, you know, um his pet peeves, his grievances, he can't keep his mouth shut. He's gonna say what's ever on his mind and and commentate on what's going on around him. And it often does gets him in trouble because there's these social norm norms you're not supposed to say or do. And he's like, Nope, I'm just gonna point it out to you. Like a guy wearing shorts uh-huh. on an airplane. He's like, you know, you probably sh- that was probably a bad choice. You probably shouldn't have worn shorts on the airplane have you thought about this and the guy's like i don't know you why are you saying that to me um so and at one point i loved it he they uh, um one episode they they call him i think i think it's in um the palestinian chicken episode where they he speaks his mind and they're like you know you know what you are you're a social assassin. You just go in and you like take things out as people. And they started assigning him jobs. Like, you know, I want to say this to my mom who makes like a weird noise after she drinks uh, a drink, doing but it. I can't say this. Can I get you to say this to him? You're going to, you're known for the person who's going to say things that people shouldn't say or can't say. He's like, sure, sure. I'll do it. No, no big deal. And he walks up, you know what? And they're like, did so-and-so tell you to say that to me? He's like, no, what do you mean? And and he go, he just leans right in. So it's oh, like, yeah. that's a funny one too. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I feel uncomfortable about that, Joshua. How about you? Like your personality. <laughs> um, my wife is so much better at like, uh, if, if something comes up, she's going to speak it right in there. She's not going to hold it in. She's going to share what's on her mind. I wish I could be more like that. Uh, but I've had to work towards that in the church and other areas of my life. Are you more aggressive are you passive aggressive are you one who has to speak up right away or or do you wait and stew on it for a long time and then eventually let it go like what it, where are you in those social norms you know it kind of this is going to sound bad it kind of depends on how smart i think the other person is <laughs> okay all right if, I, if i'm talking to somebody that i feel like is intelligent enough to have real conversations i just don't hold back i'm just blunt i'm just i'm gonna say what it is mm-hmm. there's someone there like i don't really i don't really know where they are like that i'm like well i don't want to end up in a conversation with someone who can't keep up with what i'm trying to say so i just <laughs> won't bother yeah or if i know somebody won't get it i just let it go like it just doesn't bother me I'm like they're not gonna okay it's fine yeah yeah i um <laughs> yeah and i think that's what comedy does like these stand-up comedians point out the absurd and and try to make you laugh at it to either make you feel uncomfortable or nervous laugh to really help you cope through life and there is like this elevated status that the uh the the stand up comedian is is the kind of philosopher of the day um <laughs> or 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 the political um social commentary uh philosophers theologians of the day to get up and say what's going on in our society and point out the awkwardness and weirdness or the stupidity stupidity of it um <laughs> that you help us cope through it and so so this this show does that, but yeah, I think there's an element of of my personality where like yeah, I'm not going to waste my energy on those things. Just move on. Uh, but but man, Larry <laughs> Dave on the show, he's not going to let things go. Not going to yeah. let it go. Which ends up getting him in all kinds of different situations. But I think it, it, the one that's most interesting overall for the plot is it's why he loses his wife. She mm-hmm. leaves once. They almost get back together, and then it ends up being a ring on the table. He saw where she left her cup and left a ring on the table. And he's been trying to figure out this whole episode who left the ring on his friend's because table. Because he was blamed he's for like, it. Wait a minute, he was you blamed. There? Yeah, he was blamed. He's like, wait a minute, were you there? And they're like in the middle of like, you know, they're kissing. They're about to like, you know, get back together. And he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> and he ruins the whole moment and they never yep. get back together because of this. Because he just yeah. couldn't let go the ring of the table. That's right. And, and it, 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 I think it improves the show. I'm very Mm -hmm. anti-divorce, but for the purposes of the show, it no longer was just him getting in trouble with his wife over and over and over and over and trying to fix it. Now it's he's dating. So it has like different there's more repercussions to his actions after that moment, I feel like. And I do think there's as the show goes on, he becomes more self-aware because even after him and his wife separate, he starts dating people and and people, his friends are like, oh, you're dating her just because of this. You know, you can't date her. She's the hostess of this, your favorite (laughs) restaurant. You're going to break up. He goes, oh, I know. Yeah, we we will break up. 
oh yeah oh it probably won't be pretty but but i don't care i'm still gonna eat here like he's like oh yeah I, i'm <laughs> gonna be with this person for a little while and we're gonna break up because i'm not very yeah. compatible with anybody so <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm very aware of that um and, and that was how that seinfeld episode and I, w- I was a seinfeld fan and the fact that this you know they it took seven seasons to get to where they were going to, you know, it became very meta with Seinfeld himself, the comedian and the Seinfeld show and Larry David working together to create a Seinfeld reunion show and bring the whole gang back together, the four Beatles mm-hmm. back together and and then working on this show and the awkward situations along with it. I will say that was one of my favorite episodes and it's the end of season seven, episode uh, 10, oh, yeah. because you have, you have Mocha Joe. He gets, he gets in tr- <laughs> trouble with Mocha Joe and trying to do all that along with like George Costanza with which was his pretty much Larry David on the Seinfeld show that was playing his character and became very meta and the and his wife and ex-wife and all those things I I just love that build up I love the writing I love the banter that Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David would have as they're going I don't know how much this show is improv (laughs) of them just saying here's a situation just being you can even see him at times laughing and giggling at something that's going on that you're probably not in the script and I love that aspect of the show like they're just bantering and it it, it tickles him the stuff that tickles Larry David with that authentic laugh makes me laugh and and so I just love that and if you're a Seinfeld fan and you miss Seinfeld then and you want to see like a Seinfeld show where they drop f-bombs then then season seven the end of season seven is definitely for you I I loved all I I, meta humor is one of my favorite humors so Mm -hmm. a lot of the that whole thing was just perfect for me um even you know after that they're discussing having george play a show that's just about george which is basically just larry david (laughs) so they were they were trying to pitch (laughs) creating the show that they're in basically so you had a lot of um fun back and forth between basically two larry davids you yeah. had, you know, this whole moment where they're trying to say, oh, can we get on Hulu? Can we get on Fox? And then eventually like, oh, wait, HBO. Then we could drop F-bombs. F yeah. F this. That would be <laughs> effing so cool. That's so effing awesome. <laughs> and I just keep going. And I was like, man, mm-hmm. I don't usually like humor just because it's vulgar. But in that sense where it's like vulgar and meta, it was a, it was a great mix. I loved that. Um, e- even like when they're trying to plan the show and him and George, George keeps having him go to his office and he's like, well, why don't you ever go to my office? And then they end up having a meeting <laughs> yep. about where they're going to have their meeting. Yes. Yes. A whole episode about where they're going to have their yeah. meeting. And I was like, that You're was like- so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And he goes pretty, pretty good. Pretty. There's certain things that come out of this thing. And <laughs> then like there are times with yeah. little mannerisms and then like him staring at somebody's face, like really intently. And then their faces get super close to see if they're lying or they're going to, if the other one's <laughs> going to break or snap. There's little things like that. that keep, they keep going. So, um, so, so is there, are there, is there another scenario or perhaps episode that's one of your favorites um, that that's kind of a highlight of, of these seasons? I like, um, man, I got to, I'm trying to remember the guy's name now. Um, the guy who lives with them for a while. Who am I thinking of? Oh, oh you're uh, talking Leon about Leon Black. Leon yeah. Black, JB Smooth. Yes. Yeah. Go, go, run with it. It's one of my favorites too. Keep going. I'll, yeah. I'll fill I, in after that. I like just his whole character is fun because he's just on so many different like things. He just lives with Larry, he keeps showing up in different scenarios, and they're just like not the same at all. Like you would not expect them to get along, and they do. And that, that's one of the funniest things for me because he's just a very like seems like he kind of didn't grow up the most wealthy, and he's just very like down to earth but real and a different way that Larry David mm-hmm. is real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So seeing them like get along, but also see their kind of like heads butt at times. It's like, man, that was fun. That was a fun dynamic of the show. Yeah. Um, JB Smooth is a, a former writer on, on Saturday Night Live and a, and a great stand-up comedian. Had his own um, uh, podcast there for a while. I don't know if it's still, still out there, but uh, he – them two together, they are different. You know, they're one, one's black, one's white, one's Jewish, one's African American. But man, they're also the same in the sense that they both keep it real and they both share what's on their mind. And their banter back and forth uh, is just so great. Um, Leon, Leon is that is basically. You know, um, Larry David in in the black community who just speaks his mind, eats what he wants to eat, goes where he wants to go, does what he wants to do. And he doesn't care and just kind of like, this is the, and, and commentates on what's going on around him and and them uh, as friends getting together 
and and also living together and Larry doesn't know why he's still living with him all that stuff is is very is so great whenever Leon shows up it, it's great and and there's another dynamic of this is like Larry's just not like not only like kind of Jewish culture and kind of or or LA culture but also like his awkwardness around black people um about the things that he should say or not say and them looking at him funny but then his friendship with leon learning from each other uh is is a dynamic um part of part of the show just just a great part my the other yeah go ahead no go ahead i was going to ask you a more serious question it sounded like you were going to go a different route yeah well i just want to share two of my favorite episodes one is early um I think a season three episode eight is is uh, crazy eye killer, and it's when he <laughs> like became friends with like a rapper, and yeah. and there's all this stuff like of course he's not supposed to say the n word. He's he's trying to navigate like this music and this culture and hip hop culture, and here's this like older Jewish man comedian trying to. But at one point, like oh that episode is just so freaking good. But then at one point, I think uh, <laughs> I think. Wasn't Larry David that looked at him and said, you're my Caucasian, you know, he's like, oh, you're my Caucasian, man. And he's like, I am. I'm your Caucasian. You're my Caucasian. And I that that oh, man. that was a good hilarious. One. It was it was a good one. And then I also have to say, you know, growing up in the 80s, Michael J. Fox was one of uh I grew up on his movies and TV shows, Back to the Future and whatever. Uh, the one where with that episode where they really lean into Michael J. Fox's Parkinson's disease and like Larry David not being able to understand whether he was joking or whether he was mad at him because he was shaking his head or mad because oh, he yeah. shook up the yeah, drink. Was... Um, and then uh, that whole back and forth was great. And then I'll just share one more episode, The Bear Midriff, season seven, episode six, uh, where where his assistant – or somebody works in the office is wearing like a half shirt and he's hat him and Seinfeld are like, should I say something? It's like, yeah, you have to say something. So why would you ever commentate on uh, somebody, what they're wearing, especially uh, another coworker who's female, but they, he, he couldn't let it go. He had to say something. And then that what, <laughs> what developed oh, in a man. sense of like uh, a Jesus painting, very irreverent, but then also a miracle, but then not a miracle. Ah, it is. That is a great, great episode so so yeah what was your man i mean there's a there's another episode i just thought i thought was really funny where they kept um going to eat at the same place and they got a waitress in trouble and there's this whole other storyline but the part that stood out to me that i thought was funny is he kept saying guys look that's how we know we're really old now they're not sitting us in the pretty section they're sitting us in the ugly section (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) because you know the pretty section's by the window where people see who's eating there you know (laughs) Yeah, and he kept saying yeah. that, like, sir, that's not a thing, sir, that's not a thing. And he just keeps insisting, no, it is. Look over there. Look who you have over there. And at yeah, the end, the, 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 sh- the restaurant gets in trouble for something. And he's like, I'll tell you what, I'll let it go. But you got to sit us over there <laughs> in, the, mm. in, the, in that section, <laughs> which which was funny, but also gets to the more serious question I wanted to ask you. Sure. How much of the show do you think, even though, yeah, it's hilarious, kind of exemplifies a different type of masculine tox, toxic masculinity. Um, mm. You know, usually we just kind of think of it as like the jocks and the, oh, guys are better kind of thing. But I, I think there's also this thing of people who grew up privileged as male who feel very entitled all the time. We feel like they can just say whatever they want or they deserve mm. to be in the pretty people section kind of thing. I mean, do you think that's kind of the underlying tone in this as well or? Oh, that I think that could be definitely something to look at this. And I, I, I don't know how self-aware – they are of it, but there are like, yet I think there's a privilege when it comes to someone who has a lot of money creative in LA and then there's relationships. Yeah. Could, could he, he gets to wear whatever he really wants to wear. <laughs> he can eat wherever he wants to eat. He, he can say whatever he wants to say. And yeah, he gets in trouble. He, he has broken relationships often because of that, but he bounces back and he's off to the, to the next one. I think you could, if you went real, real, um, deep in this or looked um, a little bit harder, you could say like, yeah, this is not a, a healthy way to live, but he gets away with it because of his, um, you know, privilege uh, in, in the show. So, so I think that that is a part of it. And I, yeah, um, it goes, uh, society also evolves over from like year 2000 to 2023. Yeah. There, there's yeah. a certain things that probably you couldn't get away with uh, that, that you, you, 
now that you could then or back and forth. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. There's, there's some comedy again, like are, were there moments that made me from comments like, ah, I don't think that's cool. Uh, the treatment of women or the one part where he like draws a swastika and like the kid is like, uh, draws it. I was like, I don't, I, I just coming back yeah. from Germany and from a concentration camp, I was like, Oh man, watch that episode. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I can see where he's lean into that because of his ethnicity and, and his, uh, Jewish heritage and, and, you know, you're yeah. making light of it, you're appropriating it and twisting it. But, but anyway, I, yeah, there were some parts there where I was like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. And of course I, I couldn't be cause I'm, I'm not, I'm not Jewish and, and I'm not a comedian writer in LA. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, it kind of, I think part of what made me think of it in the first place actually is a lot of it reminded me of Bojack Horseman a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So that's an animated show on Netflix. It's awesome. Um, about, a horse who used to be an actor in a 90s sitcom and he the entire storyline really is just about him being entitled and kind of being this exemplar of masculine toxicity toxic yeah word you got and, it <laughs> yeah it, you know he he does all these drugs he does all these things he keeps expecting to be in shows he keeps talking down to everybody else and you know eventually in that show he ends up in prison which mm. is part of what I, m- me and a lot of other people Everybody disagrees with me about. I just don't like how the show ends because it doesn't really end on the happiest note. You know, one of the good characters get married. The character that I most related with doesn't have an ending at all. And Bojack's in prison. And it's like, man, but this was the main character. You know, he's supposed to be redeemed in the end and suddenly be a good person. And it's like, oh, well, you know, he's a good person, but he's still in jail because he's not entitled. That's not how the world should work. And it's like, right. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> right. There's consequences for your action. Another show on HBO, Eastbound and Down, that was filmed in Wilmington about a, um, you know, washed out uh, baseball player, um, Kenny Powers. And yeah, that, that's if you, it is full on HBO. Um, uh, <laughs> it, but, but toxic masculinity and privilege, all those things um, are there. And I think this one is a comedy. It's a little bit more lighthearted. Um, there are consequences for his actions. For the most part, he's going to bounce back so that he can be in another episode and do the same thing over again. Um, and I think that's probably one of the challenges. You know, there's going to be 12 seasons of this. There's been 11 so far. How many scenarios can you do? How, how, when does this yeah. show get stale or run out of material? But, you know, it's commentating on life and, and man, life never runs out of material. Uh, you know, that's why I True. can get up and preach on a Sunday. There's always <laughs> a tragedy or a challenge or something that we can speak to speak out against or lean into, uh, to give us hope to, to meet the next day. And, and so, yeah, this, this show, uh, leans into those awkward, moments that we all get annoyed by and man life will <laughs> never run out of material for comedy and for um uh, philosophy and theology <laughs> and all those things we want to hang our hats on so l- let me ask a follow-up then and uh, sure and maybe step on some people's toes but I- i've seen a lot of toxic masculinity both in you know complementary churches as well as egalitarian churches right like i it, it's there where a male figure is in charge or is like the rock star pastor. And it gets very gross. I mean, if you, if you mm-hmm. listen to the podcast, um, the Mars Hill podcast, mm-hmm. it gets gross. Yeah. How do we guard ourselves from letting that happen as Christians? I think is that um, we have to get a good team together around us to hold us accountable and do this in community. Uh, we don't do this by ourselves. Lone Rangers just, it's just will behind the mic and I get to t- talk, <laughs> say whatever I want to say on any given day. Um, you know, I, I think that's the the danger of kind of like, you know, people are being able to have whatever platform they have to speak, whatever they want. You, we, we do, we've been intentional with systematic ecology to surround ourselves with people that are different from us. They can hold us accountable. They give us a different point of view. Um, and in the same way, I think church is that way too. The danger of like, you know, whether it's social media or like the polarization that's happened in our society, political, um, religious or whatever, we just kind of silo ourselves up with our own algorithms and, and we have our own echo chim- chambers that, um, I, I, this is who I'm going to surround myself with some, some, some yes men, but I'm going to change our own to yes people, you know, whoever's going <laughs> to say something to me. Um, but I, I do think you have to have 
family members, friends, community to help you through that. Thankfully, I do have a good wife that's going to call me out um, when when I do uh-huh. some. I have some good friends. They're like, "Will, this isn't you. What are you doing? What are you saying?" Um, I have a church that holds me accountable um, to to our teachings and and to our interpretation of scripture and, and those kinds of things too. So I, I think it's the importance of community, always relationships. And and I think Larry David in the show has friends, um, but most part, some most of the part they kind of encourage him on. But there are times when you know whether it's the his friends' wives, they're like, "Why are you this way? Get get the f out of my house!" You know that kind of thing is like, "Okay, okay." You know, that those kinds of things. Does he ever learn? Um, you know, maybe. <laughs> Maybe the show wouldn't be around if he just learned his lesson and then changed. But there, there's character development. But I, I think you got to have a good team. You got to have a good yeah. team. Around I think the perfect ending for the show, in, in my mind, would be he's he's learned enough that he feels like he needs to make fun of himself. Because that's what great comedians do when they, they see their mistake. They make fun of themselves. Mm-hmm. And he creates a show mocking himself. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That would and be there great. was controversy <laughs> around like Seinfeld's finale. They even talked about like that, yeah, that, that was one thing there. They were like, you know, that finale, we got to do, we got to do a better finale because the last one. And, and, and Larry Day was like, I <laughs> thought that finale was great. And he's like, of course you do. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't, I don't know how they'll wrap it up again. I haven't seen the last two seasons that's out there right now. I'll keep doing it um, uh, before I start <laughs> new sh- newsroom, but I, I'll, um, yeah, I, I, it is funny. Or, or to think about how they would end the show, where it would end up just Larry being Larry. You know, do we want anything yeah. else than Larry being Larry? Yeah. But I definitely think you're on something with the community thing. Mm-hmm. But I also think, which partially is the point of the show community for the first season, at least. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think it's hard unless you're going to actually for sure end the show. It's hard to have him learn his lesson because then what do you do? Yeah. 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 Curious. Curious. Yep. <laughs> well, um, you know, I gave you the homework assignment to watch this one. Uh, do, are, are you uh, glad you watched it? Would you recommend oh, yeah. this for others? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you don't mind strong language. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know if there's any nudity or not. I feel like if there is, it wasn't a lot because it wasn't right. something that stood out to me. Um, if you don't mind strong language and you want something that's not going to consume your life. Like, I don't think it's like if you start Dexter, you're just in it till you finish that show, man. I hate to tell you, but once you start it, you're, you're stuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one, I feel like you can watch some, watch some other shows, come back to it. And it's very much a leisurely watch. I think a great leisurely watch, but yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with you on that. Um, that's definitely how I, I feel about the show. I, I heard so much hype about it over the years. Finally went down that road. Now that we got like HBO Max and we're doing this <laughs> HBO series here, I was like, oh, I want to, I want to do this one. But it's, it's not something that like, oh man, I, I have to finish dinner so I can get to the show before I go to bed. It's like, yeah, maybe it's a curb night. Maybe I watch a couple. Maybe I'll fall asleep in front of it and then go back to where I left off and and see where we're going. Um, but but yeah, I again, if you like good comedy awkward comedy if you like Seinfeld <laughs> if you like that style of comedy except rated R styled Seinfeld then then this show is 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 for you I think I think you'll like it you'll know after a couple of episodes yeah. if Larry D- David is your type of sense of humor or not and whether you, you can do it I I find them um, oh yeah very funny and and then there's definitely days when I wish I could be like Larry David and just like tell it like it is <laughs> and keep it real and and say what's on my mind to others not let things go yeah I can almost, I also hear the voice his his voice doing stuff like you know if you're gonna do a podcast about Larry David you really should have <laughs> yeah yeah how could you I, I'd love to hear that? how he'd criticize this episode that's what would be fun <laughs> oh we'll send it to him we'll send yeah. it on social media yeah. I'll reach yeah, out Larry. on Twitter <laughs> I don't even know if Larry's on Twitter we'll see I doubt I doubt he's on oh, on social media or listens to other people just rips online. us apart <laughs> yeah I can <laughs> I would love great. that I'd, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd find it funny <laughs> <laughs> or we end up becoming an episode in season twelve like they're like I was listening yeah. to this podcast about my show and I have to say something <laughs> that would be great. Uh, Larry, if you're listening, if your great. team's yeah. listening and you hear this, uh, we'd be happy to be the butt of any joke of any season that, that you That's produce. In the really future. just my whole goal in life is just to be the butt of a joke. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We can work on that. Cool. Well, you know, I think God's been setting it up for a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, goodness gracious. Um, 
<laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks, y'all, for, for listening to this episode of the HBO series. There's there's so much good stuff there, but we couldn't talk about HBO without talking about the legendary status of Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Man, there's so much to geek out on. There's no shortage of content, and we're glad that you chose Systematic Ecology to be one of your uh, avenues to geek out <laughs> and to talk about the things we geek out on and so uh thanks if you have any suggestions of other shows or if you miss anything about curb your enthusiasm that you thought we should be more enthusiastic about then you can reach out to us on social media you can go to our website you can email us uh joshua loves getting emails about systematic ecology and we'll share in our discord about what um fans and listeners and hosts are saying about ourselves and others so uh yeah chime in uh, we're glad you can be a part of this and remember the enthusiasm in me honors the enthusiasm in you this was an anazal ministries podcast if you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network be sure to check out the anazal ministries podcast network